This is not just a sermon, neither is it just a teaching. You're about to hear a message from God that will empower and equip you and cause you to excel in life here on earth and in eternity in heaven. Get ready for a transformation by the Word of God through His daughter, Pastor Fumi Obilana. Amen and amen. The theme of the Congress for the Redeemed Christian Church of God that just passed was great turnaround. So this morning I'm going to be talking to us about a great turnaround. I'm believing God for a great turnaround in every area of our lives. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. So the title of the message for today is, It's Time for a Great Turn Around. And you don't turn around uh, a situation if it's working perfectly. The reason why we need a turn around is because things are not working the way they are supposed to work. Things are not happening the way they are supposed to happen. We are not enjoying all that we want to enjoy. And therefore, we are asking God for a turnaround. But you, you don't change a winning team. So if, if we are asking for a change, it's because the team is not winning right now. Uh, but the team is going to be winning very soon yeah. in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And remember that at the beginning of the year, the prophecy for the year was that it was going to be our year of, of exceeding great joy. Now, if you have evaluated the year to date, and you can't think of why you, are, you should have exceeding great joy, then we need, to, we need to reconsider a few things. We need to, because we need to catch up with the prophecy for the year 2019, because the new one is coming for 2020. And we have to make sure that we cash every check that God wrote out to us at the beginning of 2019. Because believe me, you are not going to be able to carry those blank checks into 2020. It's going to expire, right? So we want to, between now and the end of the year, make sure that we cash, cash all the checks that God wrote out to us at the beginning of the year. So if, if God at the beginning of the year said it was going to be our year of exceeding great joy, what is it that we need to do that we haven't done that has prevented that from happening? What is it? I think one of the things that we need to do more than ever before is that we need to get into the word of God. And that's why we are making the word available. <laughs> we are making the word available on different platforms. Thank God for technology. So really and truly, for you to get the meat of what God wants to do in your life, if you hear a message here on Sunday, you should listen to it at least once a day till the following Sunday. Is that too much? It's not. Because by the time we send them out online, it is about 32 minutes. Between 28 and 32 minutes, sometimes it's less than that. You need to listen to it at least once a day. And it's easy. While driving to work. While coming back from work. Most of us travel 20, 30 minutes or more to work. Just listen to it. By the time you listen to that message, five times before you come to church on Sunday, believe me, something will, something will ignite inside of you. So we want to evaluate the year 2019, our year of exceeding great joy. Have we caught up with prophecy? What has God done this year? Please, if the ushers have those um, four, uh, um, sheets of paper, please give it out to everyone. Give it out to everyone. I want us to examine ourselves. The things you asked God for at the beginning of the year, were they truly needful? Were they in line with God's will? Counsel and purpose for your life. How do you know when something is in line with God's purpose and counsel for your life? Does it align with the word of God and the promises of God? Now, if, if there were things to do with healing, healing, physical healing, financial healing, spiritual healing, if there were things to do with deliverance, 
If there were things to do with your Christian growth and maturity, if there are things to do with peace in your family, peace in your home, peace in the church of God, peace in our nation, then they align with the will of God. Now, if they do not fall within any of those parameters, if they are not strictly things that, you know, have to do with healing, with deliverance, with uh, Christian growth, then, for instance, maybe you are asking God for a new car. That's a benefit. That's a harvest. You are asking God for a new house. Um, don't let me say new house because part of the uh, promises of God for us is that we have a roof over our head. So maybe you are asking God for um, a, an ocean view vacation home. You know, with mountains on either side. And the ocean view in front of you. Now, um, th that's not necessarily, uh, um, what do you call it? That's not necessarily uh, going to take you to heaven. But it may help you to get there quickly. <laughs> so you are asking God for a benefit. You are asking God, those kind of things are benefits. They are Privileges, their harvests. So if you if you were asking God for a harvest, what seed did you sow? Because every action is a seed. So when you're asking God for something over and above, then it means you are asking God for a harvest. So what seed did you sow? It may be seeds, financial seeds. Maybe you gave special offerings. It may be you gave special offering of your time. It may be you invested in the place of prayer, intercession, not for yourself, but for other people, for nations, for our nation, for what we are going through right now in this country for the nations from which we all come from, different nations all over the world. Nations are going through trouble. Every action is a seed. So you want to evaluate 2019. So I've given out those sheets of papers because some of us are saying, oh, what do I need to thank God for? I asked him for this, I asked him for that, you know. So on that sheet of paper, I want you to write two, only two things that you are thank that God has done for you this year. Just two things. Only two things. Just write it down very quickly. And if you don't know what God has done for you, you are here under the sound of my voice. You are alive. Okay, and most of you are laughing, which means you can hear me. So that's another thing to be thankful to God for. And I see some of you moving your legs. Okay, so that's another thing to be thankful for. So write that down. Only two things. So between now and the end of the year, I expect that that's your blessing sheet will be filled both in front and behind. Everything God has done for you, just write it out. Because by the time you, we enter into 2020, that first Sunday of the year, we are going to come here and give special thanks to God for all that he has done in 2019. And believe on watch night service, we are going to give God another new list of things that we need. But if we don't say thank you to him first for what he has done, we are not going to be able to get things that are new. So we want to evaluate 2019 and find out exactly what it is that God has done and we should be thankful for. We are in for a time of a great turnaround. And we're asking God for a turnaround because life happens. We've said that here over and over again. Life happens. Life is not a bed of roses. People as they look, as um, sweet smelling as they are, they have thorns. So, life, no matter how sweet it is, will have some thorns. And then we talk about 
Every cloud has a silver lining. In, in essence, we are saying that the cloud and the silver lining go hand in hand. There's always the good and there's always the bad. You get both the good and it all comes with a package. And for those of us who are believing God for a testimony, the only way you can have a testimony is if you have trial. The 80-year-old woman who gave a testimony that she raised somebody from the dead, the only reason she could raise somebody from the dead is because somebody died. That's how we got that testimony. Or the couple who came with triplets. They had one child. The child was 13 years old. That was the only child they had. For something happened, the child just died. They came to church. They asked for prayer. They believed God. God blessed them with triplets. Two boys and a girl. The only reason they stepped out to testify was because they had lost something. But look at God in his mercy had compensated them. So if you are asking for a testimony, it's because there's some trouble somewhere. There must be trouble before there can be testimony. Behind every cloud, we say there's a silver lining. There cannot be silver lining if there's no cloud. The reason why we ask God for miracles is because there are impossibilities around us. If everything were possible, you don't need a miracle. You ask for a miracle because there are some challenges that you are facing that seem impossible. God is engaged. We pray, we call on God, we engage God because God has the solution and the power to effect the solution. You know, there are some people, if you tell them some things, they will tell you, this is what you should do. They tell you what the solution is. But they don't help you to get the solution. But God not only has that solution, he has the power to effect the solution. Life happens. So by now, I'm sure you know that <laughs> life is not the absence of challenges. When we say that somebody has a good, it's not because there is an absence of challenges. There is always a challenge one, way, one place or the other. Life is not the absence of challenges, but it is the triumph of perseverance and persistence. The challenge, there will be challenges. And life is about triumphing over those challenges by persevering and by being persistent. So triumph in life is therefore about your attitude. If you have the right attitude, and the right attitude is an attitude of perseverance, is an attitude of persistence, there will be triumph. Simple persistence will wear away the strongest resistance by being simply persistent. No matter how strong the resistance is, by being simply persistent, you will wear out that resistance. As strong as a rock is, put it under dripping water. Year in, year out. Year in, year out. It may not wear out in the first year. It may not wear out in the, in the first 10 years. It may not wear out in the first 100 years. It may not wear out in the first 1,000 years. It may not wear out in the first 10,000. But eventually, from the dripping of that water, that rock will wear out. It may take tens of years. It may take hundreds. It may take thousands. It may take millions of years. Eventually, that rock will give up. So, you must be persistent. And you must persevere in the place of faith. Because believe me, the devil is bent on making a nonsense of your faith. The devil wants you to ask yourself whether there is a God in heaven. He wants people to look at your situation and ask you, 
Do you have God? Is, does God really exist? The devil is based on making your faith, your confession of faith, nonsense. And you must be bent on making the plan of the devil nonsense. It takes persistence and perseverance to make nonsense of the plan of the devil for your life. You have to be persistent. You have to persevere. You cannot afford to allow your faith to stop dripping. Every challenge is a rock of resistance. Your faith is the water that is dripping on that rock that will wear it out. You will wear the devil out. Yeah. It's not going to be easy, but you will triumph. Amen. You have to wear him out. Don't allow your faith to stop dripping. I said to you, I said, life, triumphing in life, it is not about an absence of challenges. It's about your attitude. Your attitude of perseverance and your attitude of persistence. Your attitude... Of joy. Amen? Amen? Joy is a fruit of the Spirit. Not, I didn't say, your attitude of happiness. Happiness comes from the things that are outside of you that affect your emotions. Joy is something from the inside of you that affects your attitude. Joy. It's a fruit of the spirit. If you do not have joy, you need to check whether you have the spirit of God in you. Because if the spirit of God is in you, you will have joy. You will have joy. When you walk around with an attitude of, of, of depression, when you walk around with an attitude of things that are not working well for me, when you walk around with a heaviness around you, you need to check because depression and heaviness is not a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Galatians 5.22 says, but the fruit of the Holy Spirit is joy. Peace, joy, love, pe kindness, patience, goodness, faithfulness. Joy is a fruit of the Holy Spirit and it is released when there is an alignment with God's will, commandment, and purpose. When you are aligned with God's will, with God's commandment, with God's purpose, then the fruit of joy is released. When we talk about exceeding great joy, we are talking about a, it's a divine term. Exceeding great joy is divine. God is the one who is great. He does exceeding above and beyond what we could ask or imagine. So when we are asking for exceeding great joy, we are asking for a divine blessing. That's why you need to check whether you have the Holy Spirit. You have the Holy Spirit when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you are born into the family of God through the Spirit of God. He that is born of the flesh is flesh. He that is born of the Spirit is spirit. When you have God's Spirit in you, everything around you may be upside down. You may not be happy, but you have joy. Yeah. Everyone has a reason to be miserable and depressed. The fact that I'm here looking happy and, you know, smiling. If I sit down there and I decide I want to cry, I will cry in one minute. <laughs> Every 
everybody has a reason to be miserable. Everybody has a reason to be depressed. There is, for everyone seated under the sound of my voice, there is something in your life that is enough to make you miserable or depressed. So when you see people who are always happy, it's not because they don't have a problem. And if you are always looking miserable, it's not because you have more problem than the person sitting next to you who is always smiling. So the fact that I come here and I preach and I'm smiling and I'm, it's not because my problems are less than yours. It's because I'm not going to give the devil room to make a nonsense of my faith. His plans over my life and my situation is not going to work. I'm not going to give him that permission. Joyful people are not necessarily, are not joyful because of a lack of problems. They are joyful, be, it is an intentional, conscious determination they have to, be, to persevere, to be persistent, and to be resilient, waiting on God for his promise. They, it's conscious, it's intentional. They have made up their mind. They are determined. I'm going to persevere. I'm going to per be persistent. I'm going to be resilient. I'm going to stand. I'm going to wait on God for his promise. Because God says in Jeremiah 29 to 11, he says, For I know the thoughts I have concerning you. They are thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. So when evil is coming against me, I know who it's coming from. Because God says, I know the thoughts. And it's, God is the one who's, who is saying, I know. He says, I know my thoughts concerning you. They are of peace, not of evil. Any evil that comes near me is not from God. So when the world sits back and they say, oh, why, why, is, all, why is God allowing all these bad things to happen? Ah, don't put the blame at God's door. Because he says, I know the thoughts I have of you. They are not of evil, but of peace to give you an expected end. So if the devil is bringing evil against me, I must push back against him to say, hey, carry your baggage and go. Because this is not from God. He has thoughts of peace for us. So you have to be able to discern the voice you hear. Earlier this year, I, I, I taught an entire series on the voice. That everything in life is speaking to us. You have to discern the voice you are hearing. The little boy who said that I... Um, Something spoke to me and I said, get thee behind me, Satan. And then the Satan got behind him and pushed him into what he was not supposed to do. <laughs> it's not that kind of get thee behind me, Satan, I'm talking about this morning. But believe me, there's, there's the devil sitting on one, well, on one side of your shoulder and an angel sitting on the other. Or the Holy Spirit. And they're both speaking into your ears. And you have to choose to be deaf to one. I choose to be deaf to the devil. The devil is going to whisper. The Holy Spirit is going to whisper. But you have to choose who you will listen to. And the best way to do it is to be deaf in one ear. The ear where the devil is whispering into. Because your great turnaround must come. Your great turnaround must come. Blind Bartimaeus stood at the, at the side of the road. And he was hearing voices. One of the voices was saying, Jesus Christ of Nazareth is passing by. The other voice was saying, shut up, don't don't call him. He's not here for people like you. Guess which one Bartimaeus listened to? 
The voice that said, Jesus of Nazareth, the miracle worker, it's passing by. It started to shout. The voice said, keep quiet. He doesn't have time for you. He shouted the more. He shouted the more. He, could, he did not have eyes, but he had a voice. He did not look at what he did not have. He looked at what he had. He began to use what he had with all his power. He couldn't see the Jesus, but he knew the Jesus could hear his voice. He started to shout. Jesus said, go and bring him. He used what he had to get what he did not have. Many of us, we sit down with what we do not have. We nurse it. We pamper it. We complain about it. We, you know, we, we worship it. We build an altar for it. This is what I do not have. What about what you have? What about what you have? Blind Bartimaeus did not have eyes, but thank God he had a voice. Check your blessing list. What do you have? Use it. Where he used what he had, Jesus had him. Jesus is listening to somebody in this house today. It's time for a turnaround. It's time to kick the devil out of our lives. Kick him out of our homes. Kick him out of our finances. Kick him out of our church. Kick him out of our communities. Kick him out of our nation. Amen. Get that lying spirit out of our nations. Amen. Get it out. Cast out that lying, deceptive spirit that is spreading falsehood. What we have, let's use it. To get what we don't have. Suddenly, blind Bartimaeus could see. He saw colors. He could see danger. He did not only need, he did not need to just listen to voices anymore. He could read body language. He was able to see his friends. He was able to see his enemies. Suddenly he could see. Spiritual blindness is a terrible thing. It's a terrible thing. Blind Bartimaeus was blind. The only way he knew Jesus was passing by was because he listened. But suddenly he could see. You will see. The devil is in plain view, and yet many people are ignorant of him and the destructive work he is doing. All the things he's doing. Some of us think it's, it's an accident. It's a coincidence. If somebody is lucky, I am not lucky. Ah, the devil is in plain view, stealing from you every minute. But you are spiritually blind. Today, spiritual blindness is going to be healed. People are depressed. People are sick. People are suffering addiction. Nations are facing trouble. Violence, sickness. Today, we will receive spiritual sight. The reason why we must persist is because your dream has to become a reality. The passage we read, Psalm 126 says, when God turned again the captivity of Zion, they were like those that dream. When he restored Zion, they were like those who dream. Somebody is going to think that they are dreaming today. Yeah. 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 The life does not hand you greatness. 
Because of your pedigree, because, oh, your parents are this, your parents, you come from this family, you come from that family, you have education. You are. The, the, reason, it's not be, the reason why you are where you are is not because of the color of your skin. It's not because oh, you were born in this place or born in that place. Life may give you privileges. You are the, 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 the place where you are born, the people you are born to, you know, the, it may give you privileges. It may give you um, uh, open doors. It does not make you. It does not make you. Clinton was not born in the royal family. Obama was born to an immigrant father. He wasn't born with a silver spoon in his mouth. The royal family, they have a platform. Privilege. It does not make anybody. You make you. You make you. And when your eyes are open spiritually and you have God, then you are going places. Amen. When God restores, it's like you are a dream. See that young lady, she's dreaming that somebody is proposing to her. That somebody's, I thought some more people would say amen. amen. The only thing about that picture is that it's not going to be a dream. It's going to be real for some, somebody under the sound of my voice. You are going to be carrying the baby and you will be thinking, oh, am I in a dream? The reason you must persist is because your dream must become a reality. Amen. When God restores, it's like you are in a dream. So how do you attract this grace that will make your, your dream become a reality? Number one is you must pursue the grace. Blind Bartimaeus pursued Jesus. He did not allow anybody to discourage him. He kept shouting, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You must pursue Jesus. You don't wait for them to call you before you run to church, before you open your Bible, before you play that, this message you are hearing, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, on your way to work or coming back from work. You pursue Jesus. Then the grace will come. Blind Bartimaeus positioned himself. He wasn't in his friend's house watching football or soccer. He was at the side of the road where Jesus was passing by. He positioned himself to where Jesus will notice him. You have to be at your duty post. You have to be serving God. You have to be worshiping God. You have to be in the place of prayer. You have to be in the place of the study of the word of God. You have to position yourself where God will notice you, doing the things that God will notice. You can't be in the house of your boyfriend or girlfriend committing fornication. You have to position yourself. The number three thing that you have to do is you have to pair with Jesus. Two cannot work together except they be in agreement. Pair with Jesus. Agree with him. Are you born again? Have you surrendered your life to Jesus? Have you left a life of sin? For this grace that will make your dreams to become a reality, three things. You have to pursue Jesus. You have to position yourself properly. And you have to pair with him. A great turnaround is coming. Amen. And the grace for that come, turnaround is here. Amen. If you will do the right thing. If you will pursue God from today. If you will position yourself with him. And if you will peer with him. You silence the voice of the devil that is whispering to you. 
You listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit that is telling you, this is the way, walk in it. You make up your mind intentionally, consciously, persistently, persevering, standing in faith. And let the dripping of your faith wear out every resistance. You don't allow the devil to make a nonsense of your faith. You make a nonsense of the plans of the devil. And then you will be like that person in a dream. The only thing is that you will not be dreaming. It will be reality. The word is already working in you. We hope you were blessed by this message. For more messages and information about the church, please visit us at www.rccglivingspring.org.